In gardening, the only thing guaranteed is that it's unpredictable and that nothing is guaranteed. No matter how hard we try or plan, it doesn't always work out the way we want. At the end of summer when it was all said and done, I felt like I really didn't get enough cucumbers this year. With a super wet August and a general lack of heat on the back end of the season, this year it just wasn't happening. That's fine, I thought, because this could be a really great video idea. From germination and sprouting, to early growth and getting established, I'll give the plants every advantage they could possibly want and grow them in the smallest window imaginable. Well, here we are 30 days later, and this is what we're up against. What happened? Why do they look like this? And was this project doomed from the start? Let's find out. If you've ever watched one of my videos, and thanks if you have, you'll notice that outside of mulching, my number one tip for a successful garden is timing. Unless we're growing right on the equator, every crop we cultivate, including this garlic here, these tomatoes, and of course our cucumbers, is going to have an optimal time to plant, an optimal window to grow. For cucumbers, that timing and that window is just like all the other summer heavy hitters. Plant in the spring, harvest in the summer, 60 to 90 day crop. Easy peasy. If we're going to mess with that timing, then something has to drastically change. Bigger seedlings faster, transplanting the more advanced and optimal conditions all along the way. And that's where this all began. I started by planting my cucumbers two different ways. One seed per cell and two seeds per cell. I initially filled my six cell nursery pots with regular seeding mix. Three different ones all filled the exact same. Now, cucumbers are easy to plant and at a depth of just half an inch, I only varied the number of seeds per cell. That's it. Purely as a demonstration here, planting two seeds per cell is a great way to eliminate the risk of poor seed viability and poor germination. If you need an outcome of six healthy plants, but your seed viability rate is only 70 to 80%, then you need to plant eight to 10 cells to ensure that you get them. Conversely, to guarantee enough seedlings, you can simply double or triple up the number of seeds per cell. This comes in handy in the seed racks of the early spring, where space is at a premium. Now, if two or even all three seedlings come up, just thin to the strongest plant after the first set of true leaves. Easy stuff. Okay, all that is easy enough. 80 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal for cucumber germination, and at that temperature, those seeds will sprout in about a week. Knowing that, I went with 90 degrees Fahrenheit instead, and my cucumber seeds were up in about three days. Lots of light, consistent, even moisture, and fresh air are all the seedlings needed at this time. At this accelerated rate, the cucumber seedlings got their first true leaves in about 10 days, after which I could start fertilizing. A high nitrogen ratio mix was diluted and added to the bottom of the trays. Normally, I'd plant my cucumbers first before feeding, but again, we're on an accelerated timeline here. With the heat of the greenhouse and optimal growing conditions, the cucumbers just exploded with growth and I was hit with mistake number one. It was clear that I left the ceilings to grow for far too long. The root to shoot ratio had become so poor that it was gonna make transplanting an uphill battle. I didn't miss it by much, but had I transplanted even just a week earlier, these guys would be much more robust. Either way, the transplanting was fairly straightforward. 7 gallon fabric grow bags filled with a 50 50 mixture of compost and organic potting mix. All good there, no issues. As you know, cucumbers are vines, 
and at this stage, they're going to need to be tied up. To prevent breaking from that heavy fruit, as well as all that foliage, I always secure the vine above a node, never directly below it. Once the long, awkward transplants are secure, we can go ahead and bury those root balls. Mulching and watering were next, and after that, we were all set up. Not the most ideal transplanting, but also nothing that should set us back too far. Things are looking sparse and spindly, yes, but cucumbers can grow quick, especially if the environment is right. Being in my greenhouse, I expected them to grow fast. The days were warm still, especially indoors. What happened next though was completely unexpected. A severe southwestern windstorm tore the door right off the greenhouse. Nothing inside was really affected at first, and this door had been in need of repairs for quite some time, but still, there was a 6x3 gap right in the west side of my greenhouse. Still, the cucumbers seemed no worse for the wear, and the extra air motion could do them some good. So, not being the kind of person that likes to add extra work to my plate if I don't have to, I left it. Mistake number two. The days were warm, yes, but single digit temperatures for consecutive nights absolutely put a halt to any new cucumber leaf growth. Not only that, powdery mildew has somehow found its way into the greenhouse. So even if I rectify those nighttime temperatures, the plants are likely done for anyways. Had I anticipated those severe nightly drops and got the door back on in time, I'm convinced that these cucumbers would still be growing at that accelerated rate. However, powdery mildew is a different beast altogether. Normally attributed to the late season squash crops and sometimes even your brassicas, this fungal disease runs rampant as the daylight hours and the temperatures decrease. It's something that's normally always there, but it's limited by good airflow, reduced humidity, and higher temperatures. All things that I'd be fighting pretty hard to achieve inside the greenhouse here. So, when even those outside plants become afflicted with powdery mildew, the greenhouse stuff heading into fall likely won't stand a chance. Completely indoor sterile conditions coupled with chemical controls are likely the only solution here, which for me is not really an option. Some organic farmers have actually used milk with various levels of success, but spraying down my greenhouse with milk in the middle of fall doesn't seem like a good idea. Chalk it up to a lesson learned, and whenever you're trying to grow plants outside of their natural timing, even with all the benefits and advantages of, say, a greenhouse, you're still not always guaranteed to get the outcome that you want. Hey, as always, guys, Happy growing, and I'll see you soon.